Okay, this is section 2.7, and we're going to talk about inverse functions. So let's recall a problem that we looked at early in the chapter. Remember that we looked at JPTC's population, and we looked at birthdays. And we looked at um, a certain person, let's say we typed in a person's name or a student's name, and when we do that, we should only get one birthday out. If I typed in Joe, you would only get one birthday. Type in Mrs. Chingaris, you only get one birthday. And keep on going, Ian, show one birthday, and etc. So we know that when we do, when we type in um, someone's name or someone in the population, that we would only get one birthday out. And so we know that every input only yielded one output. That would be a function. But what happens when we inverse this? Let's say we were to take the birthdays and make that our input. So let's say we typed in the computer December 26. So what happens is if we type in December 26, most likely from the JCTC population, we'll probably get more than one person other than Matt. So we have Matt, we'll have David. We'll have John, we can have Kelly, and so on. And when so we make the input the birthday right here, we get more than one output. This is no longer a function. Because each input would yield more than one output. We looked at this original problem here. We had uh, population being the input and then birthday being the output, that was a function. Each input only yield one output. But when we inverse it, inverse means to reverse it, and we did the birthday being the input, then no longer do we have a function because each birthday probably yield more than one output for persons. Okay? So it's like a table 2.5, and we're looking at film winning the most Oscars. So here we have Ben Hur, and it won 11 of Oscars, Titanic won 11, Lord of the Rings won 11, and What's That Story won 11. We look at the um, relation here, and we look at each ordered pair. Well, Ben Hur won 11 Oscars. Titanic won 11 Oscars, and Lord of the Rings won 11 Oscars, and West Side Story won 10 Oscars. That's a function because if I were to look at Ben Hur, if I typed in Ben Hur in the computer, it would only pop out 11 Oscars. If I typed in Titanic, it would only pop out 11 Oscars. Lord of the Rings, it would only pop out 11 Oscars. West Side Story, only pop out 10 Oscars. Let's say I inverse it or undo F or we inverse F. Then what happens? We're going to switch all these inputs and outputs, just like we did in the second ago, we're going to reverse it and say I have 11, and we get Ben-Hur. We got 11, Titanic. 11, Lord of the Rings. And 10, West Side Story. This is no longer a function. Because if I input 11, if I could type in the computer, well, how many movies won 11 Oscars? That would be my input. Out would pop out Ben Hur, out would pop Titanic, and out would pop Lord of the Rings. This is not a function. Because 11 yields to more than one output or movie. So to me, it's really important for you to understand when something's a function, when it's not. Again, up here, this is a function because if I type in Ben Hur in the computer, the only thing that'll pop out will be 11 Oscars. So how many um, Oscar did Ben Hur win? 11. How many Oscar did Titanic win? Only 11. Lord of the Rings, 11. And, what, and so on. But if I reverse the order pairs and I type in 11, well, more than one movie won 11 Oscars. We have Ben Hur, we have Titanic, and Lord of the Rings. A function at is a F is a set of ordered pairs X and Y. Then changes produced by F can be undone by reversing the components of all the ordered pairs. So what I did was I undid every um, ordered pair here. 
the resulting relation y comma x may or may not be a function. So when I undid it up here, it no longer was a function. This was a function, this is not. Okay. Well, here's the definition of an inverse function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to verify that each of these functions are inverse of each other in example one. And so to verify, what we can do is you're going to go ahead and input this into there and vice versa, and you should end up with x as your value. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and show f of g of x. That same thing as f, and I'm going to put the g function there, so I get x minus 2 over 3. So there's g right here, and this is g right here. Now I'm going to input that into f. So that's going to now equal 3 x minus 2 over 3 plus 2. One more time, this is my g function. So I'm putting g function into f. Well, g is this. And now I'm going to input it into f, so it now goes into here for f. Okay. When I do that, this now becomes, or this now reduces, these 3's reduce because 3 times something divided by 3 will get rid of the 3's or reduce it. So all I have left is x plus or x minus 2 plus 2 that equals x. Okay. Now if I do the other way around, let's say I do g of f of x, that's going to be the f function into g. So I have g and I want to input f. So the f function is this. So this goes right into here. So I get 3x plus 2. And now this will go into the g function. It will go right there. That's going to equal 3x plus 2 minus 2 over 3. So I put this right into here. Well, these two things right here add to 0, right? So I'm left with 3x over 3. The 3 will reduce out, and I just get x. So what I did was I basically um, input each function into the other function. I should end up with just x left. And if I can verify that, then at these two functions are inverse to each other. So f of x and g of x are inverses. Okay, so go ahead and pause your video and try them on your own. Go ahead and verify. I'm telling you that these two are inverse of each other. You just need to verify it. So you need to show your work very clearly like I did in the last example. Okay, so I went ahead and did f or g of x into f of x. I got that right here. And I got um, this right here. And then I got x plus 7 minus 7. I got just the x there. And then f of x goes into the g function. And I did that. And I got 4x minus 7 plus 7 all over 4. And these two cancel out. So I just get 4x on top and a 4 on the bottom. And I just get x. Okay. So now, um, now that we can verify that two functions are the inverse of one another, let's go ahead and see if we can go ahead and find our own inverse. And there are four steps to finding the inverse of a function. So let's say I give you a function, and I want you to find the inverse. Well, there are four steps. So in example two, I'll go through all these steps. The first thing you want to do is replace the f of x equals 7x minus 7, or minus, or, excuse me. You want to replace the f of x, which is y. So I get y equals 7x minus 5. That's step one. Then we want to interchange x and y. We want to re reverse x and y or interchange them. So I get x equals 7y minus 5. Then you want to solve for y. So this is what we try to get y alone. We try to get y alone here. <clears throat> We've done that in a previous section of our, of our course. We add 5 to both sides. I get x plus 5 equals 7y. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 7. So y is going to equal x plus 5 over 7. So y equals x plus 5 over 7. This is now the inverse function. But to the notation for inverse function is this notation where we have f inverse. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean x one of negative 1. It just means the inverse of f of x, that's going to equal x plus 5 over 7. So this means that this function right here is the inverse of this function right here. What does that really, really mean? That means if I were to put a point into this function, let's say I have the point or put the value of 1 here, 1 over x. If I put 1 in here, 
7 times 1 is 7. My 5 is 2, so y is 2. What that means is if I were to inverse the points, or inverse x and y, or interchange x and y, 2, 1 would work right into here. So I put 2 in for x. 2 plus 5 is 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1, and there's 1. These two points will work. This point works in this function, and the inverse, or my interchange, will work in the inverse function. Pretty cool. Okay, on your own, I'm going to have you pause the video. I'm going to have you try this one on your own. I want you to find the inverse of 2x plus 7. Okay, so my inverse function, I get x minus 7 over 2 is my inverse function. And again, if I want to test that out, I'm going to go ahead and make up an order pair for this function right here. So let's say I have x be 3. I put 3 in here. 3 times 2 is 6. And 6 plus 7 is 13. So my y value is 13. When I put 13, when I inverse it, we're going to change it, the 13 for x, 13 minus 7 is 6, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and I get my y value there, okay? That's my inverse right here. Let's keep going, let's try to find the inverse of f of x equals x to the third plus 1. So again, I replace this with y equals air changes so I get x equal y cubed plus 1 and then I solve for x I mean solve for y so I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides so I get x minus 1 equals y to the third power now to get rid of a cube root we're going to choose or a cube I mean we're going to get cube root both sides I'm going to recopy that so I have y cubed equals x minus 1 and so y would equal the cube root of x minus 1. To undo a cube, you take the cube root. So the inverse would be this. So again, let's check this out. Let's say I put in the value of 2 in for x here. Well, I have to go up here. So I put 2 in right here. If I put 2 in for x, that would give me 2 to the third power, which is 8, plus 1 would be 9. So 2, 9. Now if I inverse or interchange that, then 9, 2 should work in this inverse function. 9 minus 1 is 8, with the cube root of 8 is 2. There it is. Okay. So on your own, go ahead and try the next problem. I'll go ahead and pause the video. And you can try this problem on your own. Okay, so I went ahead and did all four steps. I interchange x and y, I replace f of x with y, interchange x and y, solve for y, I got this, and then the inverse function is right there. Okay, let's go to example four. I want to find the inverse of this. Let's follow the four steps. So I have y equals five over x plus four. And then interchange x and y. I'm gonna solve for y. Now I'm gonna go ahead and clear the fractions out by multiplying both sides by y. I get xy equals 5 plus 4y. y times this will get, clear out the y, and the y times this will give me 4y. And now I have y on um, both uh, y on both sides of the equation. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little trick I told you all earlier. I'm going to track 4y from both sides. And I have y in two spots, so I'm going to pull out the y. So I get x minus 4 equals 5. Now I have y in one spot. So I'm going to divide both sides by x minus 4. So y would equal 5 over x minus 4. The inverse is 5 over x minus 4. Test this out real quick. If I put in 5 for x here, that would be 5 over 5, which would be 1, plus 4, which would be Five. Well, that's not a very good one. Let's do, um, it's not going to be a really good one to try out because I don't want to do decimals. So let's go ahead and grab the idea. But anyway, the inverse is this right here. And <clears throat> there's your function right there. It's an inverse. Okay. So we're getting close to my 15 minute um, time that I have for these videos. So what you do is I'm going to go ahead and stop this video. And I want you to try this on your own problem. And when you start the next part, your answer will be up here for this on your own.